So with that, um, I hardly need to introduce Harvey Hirschman, who is well known to probably many of you in this room, but I do have to make a couple of comments. And first of all, just the facts. So the facts are, you know, he's a distinguished professor. So what does that mean? That means that he is way above the normal ranks of professorial um, uh, life at, uh, at UCLA. He uh, holds titles both in the Department of Biological Chemistry and in the Department of Molecular uh, Medical Pharmacology. Um, he discovered COX-2, so pretty impressive. And also he's pioneered in vivo animal imaging. But I always like to know something about individuals that are not on their CV. I don't even know whether the firefighting is on your CV. Um, I, it, it's on my promotion files, as I pointed out. So Dr. Hirschman has been a volunteer firefighter in Topanga in the past. And if you have any questions about that, then I would love to hear them. So with that, I'm going to um, let Dr. Hirschman take the lead and get his slides up. Okay. Okay. Um, well, thank you. And yeah, I was, I had, for 12 years I had two jobs. I was an LA County fireman and also a uh, um, UCLA professor. And I remember one time I actually came in from a fire in my turnout and lectured to the medical students, which was really quite fun. Um, I also, uh, as Bernadette, as, um, as Lynn mentioned, uh, I have appointments in two different departments, biological chemistry and pharmacology. And in pharmacology, um, I'm the vice chair for academic affairs. And um, so that means that I handle um, sort of organizing the promotion reviews for people. So that's part of the reason why I probably it's good for me to give this uh, lecture. Can you guys hear me in the back? Is my voice coming okay? All right. And I want to introduce uh, Bernadette Amote because Bernadette is actually the person who puts the files together in, pharmacolo in pharmacology. And while I, while I have the philosophical perspective on what I think should be in the files, Bernadette actually knows what's supposed to be in the files. And so if we have any gritty dot the I and cross the T types of questions as we go through this, she's really the person who has, I don't know that she can absolutely answer every question, but she has a better chance of answering them than I do. Okay, so with those introductions, here are, um, a number of websites that, um, and I, I guess the, the this whole is thing, all going to be available. It's, it's all on the on the on the, on the um, website. On the website, so you don't have to take any of this down. But these are these are most of the stuff that I'm going to show you was uh, plagiarized, um, in fact, from um, one or another of these sites, uh, and you you really aren't going to garner much from this talk if you've been to these sites, websites or if you plan to go to them. Uh, except my own personal idiosyncratic views of some of the questions that are asked and some of, some of my, my uh, personal advice on how to prepare the self-statement. That's, I think, would be probably the, most, the, the thing that I'll have personal insight into more than anything else. So um, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about uh, um, dossiers for two different advancements. There's, there's two reviews. That um, is anybody here who is not in the assistant professor rank of one sort or another, who's above that rank, who's the, the, you know associate professor or equivalent to associate professor. You're all either instructors or assistant or assistant professors, correct? All right. Okay. So you're going to go through two kinds of reviews. You're going to go through what's called a fourth year review, and then and that's really um, uh, unique at the assistant professor level. And then you're going to go through a review for promotion from assistant professor to associate professor. So you were all hired based on your potential for academic success. You know, you come out of a postdoc or a fellowship or a residency or internship or a medical fellowship or whatever, and you were hired because people thought you had potential um, uh, based on your previous work um, that you have the potential to become an independent uh, investigator, uh, an academic researcher. The fourth year review is an internal review. It doesn't involve letters from outside. It's an internal review performed by your department, your dean, and then what's called the Committee on Academic Promotions, and perhaps the vice chancellor for academic, uh, for academic affairs, 
um, that's sort of making a value judgment about how well you're moving through the assistant professorship um, uh, and on your, whether you're on track or not to uh, be promoted to associate professor within the upper out seven year, seven year uh, period, okay? So this is, again, it's stolen from one of those websites that I, I talked about. So again, this is just really codifying what I'm saying, that during an assistant professor's uh, uh, fourth year of service, your department will con uh, uh, conduct this formal appraisal. And it's to decide whether or not, in the department's eye, and then in the dean's eye of the school you're in, the medical school here, and then in the Committee on Academic Promotions, whether they agree that you're on track or what would be expected uh, to, um, uh, to develop a record that will um, be, by the time you reach the, the seventh year, adequate and appropriate for promotion to associate professor. So what happens is the department does the review, then the, 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 the dossier is forwarded to the dean, who also makes an independent evaluation and comment on it, usually in, in, in the School of Medicine is done by an associate dean and then goes on to uh, that, that uh, departmental recommendation and the recommendation of the dean goes to the con Council on Academic Personnel. The Council on Academic Personnel makes an evaluation and writes a little uh, two or three sentence evaluation. Okay, and that is <coughs> usually forwarded um, back uh, to the dean and the chair unless there's an issue, and then they have the option of having it go to the, uh, the vice chancellor. We'll see how that happens in a minute. I want to, we'll talk about how to fill out the dossier, but I want to take you through what's expected of the department and the dean, because sometimes they don't do a good job, and it's up to you to make sure they're doing a good job, because nobody can speak for you better than you, okay? And we'll talk about that a little more. Okay, so here's what the fourth year phase school process is. It's supposed to be conducted at the end of the fourth year, Okay, um, the dossier will, you'll fill out the dossier, and the dossier will be assembled by somebody like Bernadette in your department. Um, and the, 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 the committee, there should be a departmental committee, uh, either an ad hoc committee, or a standing personnel committee, or an executive committee for the department, depending on what program you're in, that will, that should in fact issue a written report. Okay, then the whole faculty sees that dossier, and they vote, and we'll talk about what kind of vote that they that they're they're, they're uh, put together in just a second. Oop. And um, uh, the committee report, um, you'll as you'll see, you'll have an opportunity to see what the committee says, um, and then a meeting of the full faculty will then evaluate the report of the of the the ad hoc or, or executive committee. And if there's any reason for you to put in a rebuttal, it'll be in there before it goes to the, to the department for a full vote. Okay, then the committee uh, report will be evaluated by the department and it'll be voted on. And the results will be given to the chair and then the chair is supposed to call you in and go over with what the, what the um, committee report says and, and what the department vote has been. And so you should get a copy of the departmental re uh, report. And um, you'll have the opportunity now to rebut, respond, elaborate, put in anything you want into the file um, before it goes to the dean's office. Okay, then that report and your response, if there's any, will go to the dean's office. The dean will make a, will make a comment and then send it on to CAP. Okay, see so the appraisal is forwarded to the dean's office uh, for transmittal to the Council on Academic Personnel, to CAP. Okay, then as I told you, CAP will come in, it will return the comment either to the dean or to the vice chancellor, depending on the outcome. Okay, so now, this is sort of silly, but it comes from the, one of those documents. So when would you do a fourth year appraisal? Anybody, this is a quiz. When would you do a fourth year appraisal? <laughs> During the fourth year, right? Yeah. All right, so, but in point of fact, uh, you can ask for an appraisal before that, or the department can ask for a, an appraisal. In that case, it's not really a fourth year appraisal, it's, a, it's an evaluation if the, if the chair wants the department to consider how you're doing, either because he or she thinks you're doing fantastic and they want that statement made, or they're worried about how you're doing, but they want the department to look at it, then they can say in the third year, okay, we want, we want to accelerate and have, and have this looked at. Okay, or your dean can ask it, cap can ask it, I can imagine cap does ask for it. 
but you know this is what the bylaws say, so or, or the call says. So I'm just telling you about it. All right. So now here's sort of where the rubber meets the road for you in terms of the evaluations. Your department will vote. The members will vote one of three uh, evaluations. They'll either say favorable, which indicates that this this sort of um, nebulous, undefinable evaluation, uh, they conclude that it appears that you're likely that you'll eventually qualify for promotion. Okay, then there's this, this intermediate evaluation, which is with reservations. And you can see it suggests that there's some sort of weakness or imbalance, we'll talk a little more about what that might be, uh, in the record, and that um, something is going to have to be corrected in that evaluation before you um, before uh, you are up for the tenure evaluation, before you're up for the next review, the, the advancement from assistant professor to, to professor, okay? And the last evaluation is unfavorable. That is, they look at what you've done, get the accumulation of your record, and say, you know, this person's in trouble. If they don't do something, if he or she doesn't do something, to correct what we see as the deficiencies, then they're not, in our opinion, they're not going to make it. Doesn't mean you're done, but it means that there's a lot of skepticism about what's going to happen. Okay, and you got a lot to turn around. So this is my drawing. Okay, this is my view of this kind of thing. And what I'm trying to show you here is from the time you enter, the time your clock starts, till the time the promotion decision has to be made in the seventh year, okay, in the sixth year, actually, for the seventh year. And this is some cumulative evaluation of the progress you're making in the eyes of the people who are reviewing you. Okay, and what is that depending on? Well, it's depending almost exclusively at this point on your research, but also on your teaching, and also on your um, university service and your community service. The last two things are essentially unimportant um, at this level of review, and and um, uh, the primary thing is your research progress at this point. Okay, so this is some, like I said, this is some sort of evaluate overall evaluation of how you're doing in that regard. Okay, so there are three possibilities. Can you just clarify that for the health sciences, research could be translated into scholarly yes yes project. Yeah, that's right. Um, Research, you, you have to read the call for this, but research, is, as, as, as she points out, uh, as Lynn points out, um, the, the, uh, for some of the series that you're in, uh, it's not strictly laboratory research, it can be um, scholarly projects that, that um, reflect your <coughs> academic accomplishment, okay? That's yeah, what you mean. In terms of uh, the teaching, for example, I come from Cedars or any other probably the, the site hospital and affiliation with UCLA, mm -hmm. I have an appointment through the Health Science Center. Mm -hmm. And in those areas, I think, uh, teaching is very limited for researchers. Okay, so the question was, um, in some, in some <coughs> um, context, the ability to have an opportunity to teach is quite limited at, say, Cedars or at Harbor or someplace like that. But um, presumably there are, the way you deal with that is presumably there are residents or postdocs that are in the laboratories that you're involved in. If you're helping mentor them, that goes in as part of your I teaching. See. We'll talk more about that. Okay. If they're, even if they're undergraduates coming into the laboratory for an experience, so there are summer students coming into the laboratory. And in point of fact, you should seek out an opportunity for something like that. If they're, if they're medical fellows through the laboratory that you're, that you're helping, you should, you should point that out. Okay? All right, so this is, you know, the average assistant professor in the street. That's their progress, okay? The or professor. Okay, now there are four possibilities. One is you're dead on this curve. The other is that you're above the curve, right? Then the other, but, but that, and, and that eventually you're going to cross over to this magical point where you've done enough progress to be promoted to associate. Okay, in point of fact, this curve might go up like that. You might surpass uh, this cutoff point at your fifth year, and, and your chair, if they're on the ball, will look at your record and say, you know what? This person is there. Let's accelerate them. And that's a good thing. Okay, the other possibility is, and this is a very common possibility, is that you're chugging along, 
But at the fourth year review, if you're doing paper, if you're if you're a research scientist, you haven't published the papers that 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 um, are churning away in your laboratory, and people feel that you're 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 um, working along, but you know you got to get on the stick and publish those papers. So you're and then you do, and you cross over either here or even sooner, and you reach the point where you've hit that that threshold, um, that that minimum uh, level of accomplishment. Uh, to, to justify promotion to an associate professor. Okay, and then the last possibility is that you are low at this point and you and you um, uh, don't cross over at the progress point. I guess there's another possibility that you come up like this and then flatline, but I, I've never seen any of you do that, okay? Uh, generally, people who are here continue, okay? That, I have not seen that, that problem arise in my 43 years on the faculty at UCLA. All right, so these are the these are the sort of possible pathways that you can take, and I'm emphasizing this because what happens is that if we look at what happens at the fourth year review for people like this, if you're on this line or you're on this line, you're almost certainly going to get a favorable review by your department, by your dean, and by CAF. Okay, and that's that's a good thing. The, if you're if you're here, okay. There's no question, if you're here, you're going to get an unfavorable review, okay? And that happens once in a while. It's when you're on this kind of, uh, this kind of progression, where you've got a laboratory that's turning away, and there are three or four publications that are within a year of being written, but aren't written up yet. Or you're working on some scholarly uh, um, uh, endeavor, you're writing a book, which is going to make a big deal, it'll be a big hit. But it isn't, you know, hasn't been it hasn't been published yet, and so you're you're below the um, the level of of uh, documentable accomplishment, um, but you're on your way up. It's it's likely <coughs> that you'll get a with reservations evaluation. You could get a favorable evaluation, and you could get an unfavorable evaluation. Yes. Now, one scenario of the blue line could be that basically a lot of the salaries in this um, zone of assistant or um, researcher positions are soft money. And so, like in my case, I wrote seven grants in the last half year. I didn't have time to write papers. What would be a decision then if a funding line is seen, but the papers really couldn't have been written because you have to take care of your own salary? It's a good question. Um, Unfortunately, it probably won't go well. I mean, I think that the bottom line is what you've accomplished in in this period and writing grants and getting them turned down. For no, no, them. I mean I got them and I. Oh, oh, well, yeah, yeah, oh, you got them. Okay. Uh, well, you've still got this period to make this accomplishment. That's the bottom line, I think. Um, you you will be your your research. Um, accomplishments will be judged on uh, several things. One is your published record. The other is your uh, whether or not you are getting grants. Okay? And the third thing is what other people say about you in the outside letters. Okay? Um, and also, uh, it'll be influenced by what your chair says about your likelihood of, of um, turning the work that's in the laboratory at this time point into published stuff. There are extenuating circumstances, but the best thing is to get some of that stuff out. No question about it. That'll be the bottom line. Did you, you want to add anything to that? No. Because um, no. I, I, I don't, I don't I, want to give you false promises. The <laughs> bottom line is based on turning, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk about the promotion part. I'm, talking, I'm only talking about the fourth year part. We'll talk about the promotion part in a minute from assistant to associate, but, I'll, but I'll, I'll give you my bottom line. When I judge these files, the question is, has your, perform, has your potential been turned into performance based on objective criteria of published manuscripts and comments from, from um, uh, people in the field? I think when people get to that fourth year review, that with reservations is not uncommon. Oh, yeah, that's, that and was so you all are used to being A students, top of the class, totally successful. And having a piece of paper come back and saying, with reservations, is like taking a knife 
and sticking it into your heart for most of you. So what I think Dr. Hirschman is trying to get at is that you shouldn't have that response. That's like giving you an advisement. It's like telling, giving you advice. Absolutely. That, you, you anticipated exactly where I was going. Okay. Now. That's why I put this up. <laughs> See, when you're at the with, when you're at this point, you know, uh, my my tendency because would, would be to to evaluate a file like that with reservations. Some people being hard-nosed about objective criteria, criteria would say, well, it's unfavorable at this point, but maybe they'll pull it out. Other people will say, well, look, here's the extenuating circumstance. She's been writing grants and hasn't had a chance to really get there, but now she's got the money and I think she'll get there, so let's call it favorable. Um, my own view is that um, I would tend to, to use the with reservation term, but in my role as vice chair, I often also counsel people, and Lynn made the point exactly right. With reservations is not a, a negative comment. It's just saying, look here, here are the things that need, that need to change, and you're, you're probably going to be able to change them, but we just want you to recognize clearly um, that this is a problem. Without naming names, we have a person in our department who I think is absolutely spectacular, has garnered, garnered a, a great deal of um, uh, grant resources. Okay, we know that this individual is doing spectacularly good stuff in their laboratory, came up for a fourth year review, and got a favorable review, but hadn't published a paper yet. Okay, but we know from inside that the individual has a lot of money, a lot of talent, a lot of good ideas, is extremely well organized, and there's no question that this person is going to be a world leader. Okay? So again, this is, remember this is an inside review, and those kinds of evaluative characteristics are, are going to happen. And quite frankly, whatever, eva oops, whatever you, evaluation you get at this point, come on, whatever evaluation you get at this point is not binding in any way. Okay? Not binding at all. Because what happens is, what happens that's important is what happens here, okay? And almost certainly, these people are going to continue on this pathway and they're going to be promoted. And the people who have with reservations are usually wind up getting promoted, okay? It's an advisory thing to say, we want you to take notice that you need to be aware, if not concerned, about this question, um, whether you're spending too much time teaching, we'll talk about some of the things that might lead to this evaluation. I'm going to add one more thing. You can actually turn in a with reservations to your advantage with your chair when you're being asked to go on different committees. Right. You can say no to your chair because your chair has a vested interest in your getting promoted. So if you do get a with reservations you, and you're being, you feel like you're being overburdened by committee work, it's an opportunity for you to go to your chair and say, look, I need more time to make it through to promotion. And so... More free time. More free not, time. Not more years, but no, more no, free No, 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 but more free time. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up this one because when I talk to some other advisor, they instead tell me to do more community service. Community work won't get you promoted. Exactly. So that's what I thought. <laughs> My I'll just say that flat out. I mean, you do, would Thank you disagree you. with me? No, we'll talk later. <laughs> Tell them I said so. Okay. Okay. What have I got to lose? Tell them I said so. <laughs> okay. All right. So, as I told you, the, the results of this appraisal go from the go to the chair, from either the dean or the vice chancellor. Usually, will only, the file will only go from CAP to the Vice Chancellor if there's an unfavorable recommendation. Um, and, and then the Chair is supposed to counsel you, tell you what happened and counsel you. And that's when you take this, this with reservations and you're supposed to say to the Chair, well, the kind of counsel you're supposed to give me is give me some more free time, right? Um, uh, and then you guys will talk about what's supposed to happen. And, and you will, or you should, the chair should give you a copy of the, of the little note. The little note from the council, from CAP is usually like two or three sentences summarizing why they say favorable with reservations or unfavorable. 
Okay? So here are the kinds of concerns that will lead to the call, the, the document I, I, I took this from said less than favorable, and I added what they mean is either with reservations or unfavorable. This is the most common uh, comment that the research productivity is weak. You know, the person has no publications or only one or two, uh, you know, one publication where they're a middle author or something like that. And so there's no documentable indication in terms of publications that you've reached a point where you're, you're turning um, potential into progress. Okay, and that's what, that's what you're looking for in the, fourth, in the fourth year review. Now, if in fact, you have three grants funded and you're cranking away, then you very now, very, that may very well be taken into consideration if people think that, and looking at what you're doing in the lab, because you'll be saying that in your self-statement, which we'll talk about in a little while, then if you, if you're, um, if you can indicate that you're really on target, like this individual that I mentioned previously who's doing spectacularly well, and we know the research in, in that laboratory, and you know, we're convinced that it's gonna, gonna um, lead to some really major publications in, in first-line journals, then even with no publications, you may very well get a favorable review from your department and the dean, in which case CAP will probably point out the problem in their note, but go along with what the department recommends. Okay, so this is, this is like 98% um, the, the comment that you get. Um, and see, this is, you jump you jumped with sorry, a gun. Sorry. Here's in red and in bold. <laughs> The comment that with reservations is often the evaluation of faculty who are doing well in their research but haven't yet published the results. That's the most common thing to happen. Okay. Uh, then there's things like you do it very if you're if you're doing things that aren't research, uh, the kind of thing that you talk about scholarly things. It's not quite clear um, how much of your work is being done collaboratively with other people. And this is something again in your self statement and in the evaluation forms, you need to really emphasize what's collaborative and what you're doing. Or there'll be there'll be there potentially be comments that the quality of the work isn't strong, and teaching didn't meet a high standard. This is not usually something that happens on the um, on the uh, uh, um, evaluation. Here is something that does happen: an unbalanced record with respect to the several criteria for promotion. Okay, devoted too much time to the service requirement, and so directly commenting on what you asked me about that somebody told you you should do more committee work is in my evaluation, I don't know who told you that, but I think it's a disservice to you. Okay? okay? Because, um, you know, it, the, it, the main thing that can happen that can really screw you up is that you have too much clinical work or too much service or, or too much committee work and you, and you either elect it or been forced to do that um, by the environment that you're in. And as a record, and as a result, um, you can see the emphasis is on teaching and creative work, creative endeavor, meaning either research or scholarly pursuits. This is number one, this is number two, and all the rest of this is number 12 and 18. Okay? I mean, they're not important compared to these other two things. Okay? And again, here's what I'm talking about. People exhibit high promise, but the achievement record was weak. Meaning that, you know, this person got grants, got data in the notebooks, but hasn't quite gotten it out yet. Or, Got a book that's going to be written, but hasn't gotten you know haven't gotten the publisher's notice yet. Okay, everybody, everybody with me here? Okay. So that's really all I want to talk about for the fourth year review. We can come back and talk to you about it if you want. But remember, I said we're going to be talking about two advancements: the fourth year review, which we've just discussed, and then there's another one. So and then there's another review: the review for promotion from assistant professor to associate professor. I talked to you about why you were hired because you were a potential, and I talked about what they're looking for in the fourth review, where you are on that curve that I drew. What's the difference between that and promotion from associate, assistant professor to associate professor? Okay, I'll just read this verbatim, although I already said it. The review for promotion to associate professor is an attempt to determine whether your potential, when you were hired and as you were going through this process, has been realized. Have you accomplished what was expected of you? Okay. Um, has your potential been realized in performance? And that's going to be based primarily on your research, on your published research, okay? Or whatever other scholarly endeavor you're involved in other than your teaching and your service, okay? And so you'll be reviewed primarily on that basis 
either research or scholarly accomplishment, and to some degree on teaching. Uh, there won't be much, there won't be much um, evaluation in terms of these other criteria. Primarily, your scholarly accomplishments documented now, not promised, but documented. Okay? I, I can't underline, exclamate, bold, put in color type any, any stronger than what I said. It would be recognition by your peers in the form of grants, okay, invited seminars, invited media, symposium, and published research, underlined, underlined, bolded, and so on. Okay, so here are the criteria for all faculty members for advancement from assistant professor to associate professor. They're in the wrong order. It should be research and creative work, then teaching, then university and public service, and then professional activities. And professional activities mean things, we'll talk about this, mean things like um, um, uh, uh, re serving as a reviewer for journals, being on a study section, being on an evaluation panel. And you can read all of this stuff in instructions to the review and, and appraisal committees. Again, in general, greater emphasis is placed on the candidate's performance on these first two criteria, and they should be reversed. Okay, and then there's this stuff about supposed to be superior. But I think excellent would be good enough. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about teaching. Now the thing is the dossier that is gets put together is done by you and by the department. And different departments do varying qualities of jobs on this. And nobody, I think, pretty that's fantastic and I never have to worry about this. You get all the right stuff. But you need to keep after whoever is in charge of putting together files to make sure stuff is there because it's your assets on the line, okay? Not the person who's putting together the file. So when it comes to teaching, there's supposed to be student evaluations for the past few years, either by numerical ratings or by, by, by um, forms that are given out to the students. And your department should be asking for letters from, from your peers, from people on the faculty, from research assistants that work with you, but postdoctoral fellows, from students and others that are in the, in the program, they should have teaching evaluations, formal numerical teaching evaluations on you, but if in some place like Cedars where you don't have that opportunity, the department should solicit, solicit letters from the postdocs or, or, or you, should, you should have a way to inform them, okay? Um, you can read all this stuff. But here's the point. I'm going to make this point over and over with you as we're talking about those kids. Say what you want for the review process. So if a student's written a letter saying, you know, that was a spectacular and good course, or I really appreciate the advice you've given to me on, on um, my thesis, put it in your dossier. Okay? Tell the people putting together your dossier that you want it in there. Um, and in point of fact, although the department is supposed to solicit this stuff, you can talk to postdocs, you can talk to students, and you can ask them. You know, if they feel like they would like to do it, don't, you know, I mean, you, know you, you make it uh, something that clearly you're not putting pressure on them, but you can ask them to submit things to the department chairman, saying that, you know, you know that they know that you're up for promotion, and they, they think that they'd like to have this in the file for you. Okay? Remember, you can put anything in your dossier that you want. Okay. So, there's also supposed to be peer evaluation. You're, you're actually supposed to have members of your faculty observe your teaching. Okay? So um, there should be, as they say, there should be comparative charts. There should be, they should be visit your classroom, letters from your peers. Letters should be sought by the department. It says letters should be sought by the department and not the candidate. Well, yes and no, in my view. You ask the person who's putting together the file whether they're doing this. If they're not doing it, you do it. Okay. So if, for example, let's go back to you. You're in. You're. Um, what 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 rank are you? What rank are you? You're a, a assistant professor. Assistant professor. And are you working in a, a more senior person's laboratory? Are you under a more senior person? Yeah, yeah. under the director directorship of the program. Under directorship of program. Okay. If you're mentoring postdocs. There's no reason why you can't go to the head of that program and say, look, you know, I spent a lot of time entering these programs, this person, and, I, and I'm up for promotion. If you feel comfortable about doing it, would you consider writing a letter? 
you don't have to ask and have him answer yes or no. But I don't think I would put him under him or her under that under that um, under that uh, commitment or umbrella. But there's no reason why you can't say you know it would be it would be great if you feel that you can do it if you would drop a note to the chair. Okay, because these are important things. Again, not nearly as important as the research. But you know everything you can do to make you know to, to shine your apple. Is uh, you know polish your apple is the best thing you can do. Okay, and so again, I would say remember you can add anything to your dossier that you wish to add uh, for the review process. You can add syllabus, of course. You can add letters. You can add whatever you think will will help your dossier. There's no reason not to do it. Okay, in research and other creative activities. Okay, you're supposed to put in a list, and, and I think we can sort of skip over this because there's actually very strict instructions about how you should do this on the promotion form. I just pulled this out of one of the many documents that I asked Bernadette to send me when I was hurrying and putting this presentation together. And this is one I pulled out. Okay. Um, here is one really important thing, though. If you are doing collaborative research, if, you're, if there are five authors on a paper and you're the third author, the committees are going to tend to discount that unless you can make a case that you have done something that is unique and invaluable to that publication. And so in your self-statement, you want to make that point. We'll talk about the self-statement. But the other thing is that if you are working with two other people and it's a three laboratory collaboration and you are not, uh, and, and um, you are one of three people who are invaluable to that effort, you have the right, and I would ask the other two people, to send a letter to your chair explaining how critical your role was in that study. Okay? Because normally, when, when a paper is looked at um, for evaluation, look at the first author, they look at the last author, the first author did all the work, the last author generated all the money. And so uh, that, that's, the, uh, that's the, the, the sort of way people look at it. Um, but if you've done something really important, and you're not either the course of the first author or the corresponding author, then you want to spell it out and you want somebody who's interested in your best interest to spell it out also. So I mean, it, 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 your, your chair should ask people about that, but is likely not to. So you're the best guardian of your own interests, and I advise you to do that. Okay? Um, where are we? Okay. Uh, your dossier is, when, now when you're going from assistant professor to associate professor, what's really important is getting outside letters. Um, and we'll talk about, uh, well this actually, here's the slide about how that's put together. So this doesn't happen for your fourth year review, but it will happen for your promotion from assistant professor to associate professor. So you're supposed to submit a list of potential people. The chair is supposed to put together a supplemental list of people who, outside, who could review for you. And generally he or she will have to ask other people who are expert in the field. Okay, and then inside the chair or whoever's in charge of promotion, somebody like me um, in pharmacology, will take the first list and the second list and prepare a list of six to eight people, some from this list and some from that list, okay, and then uh, put together perhaps six to eight names and extramural letters will be submitted, submitted, solicited from all those people. Now one of the things that happens in a lot of departments is they don't do a good job of this. They only solicit three or four letters. And that makes it very tough on the dean and on the and on the uh, 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 on, on the cap because there's not enough external evaluations in the eyes of cap. So again, if there's some way you can talk to the people who are putting together the file and try to see that they get enough outside letters, uh, you don't you don't know who they are, but you should just sort of try to keep on track of what's happening to your file if you can. Best to get on a first name basis with somebody like Bernie Depp in your department and keep in contact with them about what's happening. Okay? Uh, you can read the rest That's of this. That's a good question. Does yeah. that mean outside of UCLA or outside of your department? Outside UCLA. This means outside UCLA. And for some ridiculous reason, it even means outside the University of California system. Do they still, is that still the case that it used to be at least that if you solicited a letter from Berkeley, it wasn't considered, from somebody at Berkeley, it wasn't considered to be an outside letter? They're, they now consider UC uh, extra. 
they, they do consider yeah. the other campuses as extra narrow now? Okay. Good. There's, there's some sense in the administration. Yeah. What's the feeling about whether those uh, letters can come from someone within your specialty or an under, you know, a related but separate specialty? In your specialty. Okay. The, the, more, the more they're able to make a, a um, qualified expertise, expert evaluation of your field, of your work, the better. What they shouldn't do is be somebody who was your graduate advisor or your postdoctoral advisor or your mentor somewhere. Okay? Yeah. That kind of person can write a letter for you, but it's better to have you know eight letters in your file rather than six if that kind of person writes a letter. If you've had if you've had if there are four letters in your file, one comes from your postdoctoral advisor, one comes from your graduate advisor, and one comes from the undergraduate school who talked you into going into science or medicine, that's not a good thing. Okay? Does it matter if they're clinical or pure science? It depends what you do. Um, if you do clinical research um, and you're primarily a clinical trialist, then you want to have somebody who's well known in that area evaluating your work. Whoever is the best set of experts to give a critical evaluation of your work are the kind of people you want to have. Okay? Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. So. So now we're talking about letters of evaluation, and you were asking about did that mean from inside your department or outside your department. You can get internal letters, and they can be from people within your department, or they can be with, from people outside your department. It used to be that they required internal letters, now they don't require them, and, and um, the internal letters should not just be, you know, I know this person and she's really a warm, comfortable, nice human being. It shouldn't be that kind of letter. It should, and it, 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 it should be from somebody who is either a collaborator who can testify how critical you are to that program, or somebody who works in a related area and can say, you know, I, I happen to know this individual because we work in similar areas, and um, I can testify that, that, that they're doing unusually good work and really deserve this promotion, okay? As soon as you put that person, as soon as you request a letter of internal, an internal letter like that from that person, they will automatically be disqualified from serving on the review committee at CAP, okay? If there's a, if there's going to be, uh, not CAP, it's an ad hoc committee. If there's an ad hoc committee or somebody from your department, then they shouldn't serve on the committee. So you, you, you want to be judicious in, in uh, selecting people. I think the line here that's important is internal referees should only be selected if they can provide special information. Okay, so um, we tend in pharmacology now to solicit very few of those letters unless we think that the, unless we think or the candidate thinks that there's a very special point that that kind of letter can make. Okay. All right. Professional competence and activities. You'll see that on the form. Again, this is not something that's going to be um, a major determinant in whether or not you get promoted. Um, whether or not you review a lot of papers for um, second line journals anyway isn't going to be very important. If you do get asked to review papers for Nature and Cell in my field, for example, or Journal Experimental Medicine or something like that, then, then that would be um, important. Uh, if you're asked to serve on study sections, we'll talk about that a little bit. But your statement, your self-statement will be very important in this regard. If you think you've done something that is professional competence or community service that you think is unusual and extraordinary for somebody who's going from assistant professor to associate professor, then that would warrant uh, mentioning. University service, um, you know, this is a tabulation of committees that you sit up, sat on. This will not count very much. Okay, um, in, in my view. But remember, you can add anything to your dossier that you want. So if you serve on a committee and the chairman says, you know, you were the spark plug for this committee and you're the person who really drove um, our getting to a decision or you changed the agenda by your contributions and they were above average, tell them to send a note to your chair or send a note to you and you put it in the file. Okay? It's what you do that's unusual and beyond what might be expected for somebody going from assistant professor to associate professor that will strengthen your, your, your promotion file in these categories. Okay? All right. Now, the dossier, the self-evaluation letter. You, you'll write a, a self-evaluation, and we'll talk about that again. 
in, in, in a little while. And here's a kind of, you know, this is just sort of verbiage about it, but we'll talk about it specifically in a little while. But I want to point out, the best advocate, or at least the pro advocate most interested in seeing you get promoted, um, is you. So your stealth, stealth statement can, I think, really be pivotal in the CAP review. Um, because people on CAP, with one exception, perhaps, from the department, probably won't know you. And so what you say can be very, very pivotal in that evaluation if there's any issues um, that, that come up. So the issue of publication um, versus having grants and where you are in your progress, something that you can address in your, in your self-statement probably better than anybody else, or certainly should be addressed by you, okay? If you reach that point. If you reach a point where you only have one or two publications and you're at the time limit, and you've got a lot of money um, in grants, and you're rolling along quite well. You have to make that case, okay? All right. So here are the. Oh, uh, everybody's squirting. Well, a lot of people have to do someplace at yeah. why. Okay. I'll ask too bad. I wanted to go through the. We'll go through the. Well, those who can stay can stay, and we'll, we'll keep going. Okay. So all right. There are mentoring forms that have to be put in. Make sure that they get in. If they don't, take the initiative. Um, peer evaluations, we talked about student evaluations. We'll talk about this in a little bit. Well, I'll get on to it when we get on. Yeah, okay. These are, these are things that, that we'll get on to. So here's the file. Here's the form that you're going to have to fill out. There are all the student evaluations and all that stuff that the department is supposed to take care of. But um, you want to try and make sure as well as you can that they're doing it. But here's what you're going to be responsible for. These are the four, this is the promotion <coughs> form that you're going to fill out for going from an assistant from assistant professor to associate professor. Okay, there's there's biographical data, there's information about your appointment. Okay, you're gonna have a, a list of students that you've been uh, mentoring that have gone on to their degrees. And this should include fellows, graduate students, postdocs, visiting scientists, whatever. If you had people who've gotten PhDs, fine. If you've had um, uh, people who are working in your lab, uh, other than PhD candidates will be over here, you should include residents, medical fellows, and so on. So you should include these kind of people as being under your mentorship, okay? Your boss will doubt include them too, and they push it around the line, but, but you include them. All right, um, teaching record, you know, just be sure to indicate the number of lectures you give, the, the, uh, the PBLs you might meet with, the, how many people in the lab you supervise, and so on. This is just pretty much formula formulaic. In the other teaching activities, remember, you can put in anything uh, that you think is appropriate. And this is where you want to fill this in on your form. You can put in the fact that you've been tutoring students from a class in an informal way, that you've been mentoring on a one-to-one -one basis, doctoral students or postdocs or med medical fellows. Um, and, you know, those people should be solicited for letters. That's your teaching activity. Okay? Um, uh, university service, you know, if you've been on the library committee for your department, I think departments probably don't have library committees anymore, right? See, that dates me. Okay. Uh, ever since the invention of uh, Bob Bed, they don't have library committees. Um, uh, and other committee service. But one thing I would say is start keeping a record right now. Start keeping it yesterday. You know, every, every course you're involved in, every submitting you sit on, every, um, every time you review a paper, every time you do anything that um, is academically meaningful, just keep a log so that when it comes time to figure out what courses you taught, you don't have to start trying to remember it. When you start thinking about how many different journals you reviewed for, you don't have to try to remember it. Start, I've made the mistake of not doing that. Um, uh, until a few years after I, I've been here. Um, but I really now strongly advise all the people on Metro to do that, okay? And now when you come down here to community service, start keeping that record. If you speak at your kid's school about science, that's something you want to put in there. If you uh, sat on a science fair, which some of us do, do that thing. If you volunteer at the local food bank, like I said, you know, put that in. And as I say, I was an LA County call firefighter for 12 years, and I went into every, yeah. I went into every one of my promotion files. Uh, during that time. Okay, um, honors, start keeping a record, you know. Um, okay, now here's probably, um, you want to start keeping a record of all your grants so that you don't have to try and remember that, you know, that, that um, you know, that local cancer center grant that you got or something like that. You can put that in there. Of course, peer review, 
uh, grants from national agencies are certainly the most important thing, but if you have funding from foundations and so on, that's also important. Um, uh, activities in scholarly and professional science, uh, societies start keeping the record. Again, it won't mean much in the fourth year review or the, or the assistant to associate professor. Research is the important thing, but it can't hurt. Same way with editorial services, you know, keep a record. Won't mean much, but it can't hurt. Consulting activities, the same. Okay, other professional activities. Okay, the most important external thing I think you can do um, that will get you some recognition in this promotion uh, business is giving invited seminars and invited lectures at major, and or invited uh, lectures at major society meetings. Because this is a strong indication of professional, uh, uh, professional recognition. The question is, have you been accepted um, by the cognizante in your field? Have you been credentialized? Well, how do you get credentialized? You get grants, you publish papers, and you get invited by the biggies to come and tell them what you've done. Okay? But you don't have to be invited by the biggies. I always tell my mentors, my, my mentees, look, if you've got friends that, at Harvard, Yale, University of Washington, um, University of Chicago, have them invite you to come to the seminar. That'll go on your list. There's two reasons to do it. One, you've been invited to give seminars and you can put it on your list. The other is while you're there, arrange to meet the people in your field that you don't know who you'd like to know about your research. Because eventually you've got to have people write letters for you. So if during years three and four you've got something hot but isn't published yet, go give a talk about it. Okay? And then meet the Michigans in that field who are really you know, important people and get them to know your, your name and face so that when it comes time to think about who, who's a, an important person in the field that can write a letter for you, that's the person or those are the people. Uh, it's a little bit of gamesmanship, but that's why you're at this meeting, right? So, fine. Okay, now, um, this is the last thing you have to do. It, it, the last couple things you want to do. Um, you can, um, you're, there's now you're supposed to, um, your chair is supposed to ask if there's interdisciplinary work that you do. You, they can ask the head of an organized research unit to comment on your interdisciplinary work. Don't abuse this. Poor Judy Gasson, the head of the Cancer Center. You know, there are 300 members of the Cancer Center. And so she's going to get, in, this is a new thing this year, she's going to get inundated with people asking her to write letters saying that she's doing interdisciplinary, they're doing interdisciplinary cancer. Work. If you're truly doing something that is involved with an engineering program, and a bioinformatics program and biology, then you want somebody to testify to that, okay? But if you're doing um, prostate cancer and there's a prostate spore, you don't need to get the head of the prostate spore and write a letter saying you're doing interdisciplinary stuff because you're doing both imaging and molecular biology. That's, I think that's, that's not what we're talking about. Now, I want you to notice that this is, this is a thing that you certify um, prior to determination of the departmental recommendation. So the file is put together, it's supposed to go to the department, but before it goes to the department, Bernadette calls you and says, come in and sign these pages. Okay, and you initial all these pages. And you have the opportunity to look at this file before the departmental review, you can see what's in there, you, you actually can ask for redacted letters, but I wouldn't do it at this point. Um, but you can ask, are there are there letters? Are there you know? Are there uh, letters about my teaching? Are there letters about my community service? Or have you have you has it been quantified? If there hasn't, then you can take remedial steps to put stuff in there that you think testifies to that. You have the right to do that. Okay. Then after the determination, remember there's the department meets. They write a recommendation. It goes to the chair. The chair is supposed to call you in and tell you. What's in that in that uh, letter? Actually, supposed to show you that letter, the adapted version of that letter, and and um, have you uh, uh, look at it, and then you. Uh, so you're supposed to be informed of the departmental recommendation, the substance of the comments, and you should know the vote. Okay, and you can look at the departmental recommendation, redacted. You can add a rebuttal, any kind of comment that you want um, to that. If there's an issue that came up that you think needs clarification, that's factually wrong or needs um, uh, elaboration in the, in the department's letter, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the review team's letter, 
then you can add that to your dossier and it'll become a part of the dossier and it goes to the dean and then goes on to the committee on academic personnel where the people actually do the important vote. So you can add this stuff. Okay? And then um, this is just tells you how to fill out the, the bibliography. Okay, so I want to talk to you for the last few minutes here um, about your self statement. I have to go to students. Okay. I have to go to somebody's PhD defense. So, <laughs> so I want to, before you get to this, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I learned a lot, and I know that everybody who can stay for the last part will learn more, and you'll have to come and tell me what you learned. <laughs> okay, so we're really going to have three more slides. Um, one is about your self statement. Okay, you're going to document your teaching. Remember, there's that part of the forum that said, you know, what course have you taught? How many students are in it? How many faculty are involved in teaching it? And so, I, my own perspective is um, you want to uh, provide a statement about how you feel about the importance of teaching, why teaching is important to you. You are in a university, this is an educational institution. And so, I think you should tell people why you think participating in teaching is important and what your philosophy of teaching is. For example, I, I have very clear feelings about how people are taught and how they learn. And I teach medical, I teach both medical students and graduate students, and I teach them in a very different way because my objective for what I want them to get um, out of my instruction is quite different. And I elaborate on that when I, when I, when I am uh, filling out promotion files. Um, as I say, for example, I, do, I didn't realize I kept this in there, but uh, I point out that I teach medical students and graduate students with different objectives and with different methodologies. So, the, but, you want to get your ideas across, but you also want to make the point that you've done an adequate amount of teaching and that the quality of your teaching is, is good, and I think that you can refer to things that, that suggest that's true. But I do think revealing that your motivations are good. And you, and you want to do all the quantification. You just sort of want to briefly review what's in that table, okay? Um, and it's also quite reasonable for you to, to, to indicate why you, what impact you, you think you had on students and in the course. I mean, as I say, nobody's going to be your advocate as strong as you. But you want to be sure that the file contains those evaluations and the peer evaluations. You want to review this with the administrator and the department puts it together and ask if the documents are there. But again, remember, you can add anything you want. So if you're on a PhD committee and um, some student says, you know, you were incredibly valuable to me, have to send you out. Put it in the file. Put it in the statement. Let people know that you've done this kind of stuff. It's in the record. But there's no harm in, 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 in talking about that. But the institutional service um, or the scientific community is really, I think, probably the most important part. But remember, this is, you know, 3% of the evaluation research is, research and teaching are the overwhelming important parts of, or, or community service, uh, or uh, scholarly activity, rather, the overwhelming uh, aspects of what this promotion is going to be about. Accomplishment as a professional in your scholarly activity and in your teaching. Yes. In your uh, clock for whatever reason. Off your clock? Yeah. Yeah. Do you need to comment on that? Um, or it's essentially irrelevant because. Well, if, uh, if you're taking a year off the clock. If you took a year off the clock. Yeah. Um, for say having a kid or something like that. Um, it, you can put in a line, but I don't think I don't know. Really, that doesn't make any difference. It, I mean, it, it could if it impacted. Your progress in some way. But presumably you're getting the year off, so so you so you're on a level playing field. Um, but it, it, it can't hurt to mention it. But you're, you you should actually you should ask your chair to mention it in his or her letter. That's you know maybe that's their more appropriate place. Yeah, that it's you can mention it, but I wouldn't make a big deal of it. I wouldn't use it as an excuse. The whole point of getting the year off, getting the year off your clock, is because if you've had some reason, like being responsible for a child or an illness or something like that, then um, that year off is supposed to compensate for that that delay in your progress. So you can mention it, but you, I, I don't think you can say, well, because I had this year off, that's why I haven't accomplished as much as I would have if I hadn't had the problem, or hadn't had the reason to take it off. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Um, okay, so basically, that's all I've got to say. Good luck with all this, but I'll be happy to answer questions for a while. Okay?